Let's turn our Bibles to the book of James. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We look at verses 13 through 16. 13 through 16. James chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. The title of the message is Learning from Those Who Gave Into Temptation. Learning from Those Who Gave Into Temptation. Learning from Those Who Gave Into Temptation. James chapter 1, verse 13. The Bible says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err. My beloved brethren. Brother Richard, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a beautiful Sunday that we may come here to church, Lord, and worship you and praise you and hear good, sound doctrine preaching unto us, Lord. Father, I pray unto you to please fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit that he may have power and authority to. Uh, preach unto us, Lord, that the preaching may change us from our heart inside out, that we may reflect the light into this dark world, Lord. Uh, For this world is God forsaken. And and please use us, Lord. Please use us as your servant out here in the world, that we may go out there and preach the gospel unto the sinners, Lord, unto the lost souls. Uh, Father, we thank you for the truth that we have. In your word, the King James Bible, uh, it's been purified seven times, Lord, and there's nothing that can go up against it, Lord. And we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the instructions. Uh, Let us apply the instructions into our hearts that we may change, uh, that we may uh, not sin against you, Lord God. And Father, I pray that you be with us today, provide your protection, your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness unto us, Lord. We need it more so than ever. And Father, I pray unto you to please guide us with your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we may not uh, be guided with our sinful flesh, and that everything we do, we do it unto you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Learning from those who gave into temptation. Bible, as you know, is full of historical events and you can't see many of our forefathers in the faith who gave into temptation who failed many many times as you know you know you and I won't be in this place if Eve didn't give into her temptation many times people will wonder what if and Adam you know same along the same line gave into temptation you know Noah Gave into temptation because because of what? Alcohol. Abraham gave into temptation. Isaac, Jacob, David, Peter, many people gave into temptation. And when you think about those characters in the Word of God, do you think you're better than any of them? No. No. What does that mean? If they fail, most likely, it's not a matter of if, it's when you fail and you give into temptation. When you have failed and gave into temptation, you have to look back. What caused you to give into those temptations? And many times it's simple because you, know, you weren't right with the Lord, because you, know, you didn't think of sin as a big deal, because you thought it was okay because you're trying to justify it. Many times, if you have the heart to be right with the Lord, Lord will re- let you know right away. Think about Peter. He loved the Lord. I mean, he loved the Lord. He loved the word of the Lord. However, when he let his emotions get the best of him, what happened? He failed, and he gave into temptation. David, man of God's own heart, 
fail, gave in. You know, Uriah, Bathsheba, all those happened because he gave in to temptation. Even think about Jacob trying to be smart, you know, you know, trying to do things in his own way and then got proud and stuff. What happened? You know, you, God's going to teach you those lessons, right? Yes. And he had to limp. And when these things do happen, you see, and don't just, you know, read it and then let it go into your one year, let it go out the other. You have to think about it, meditate on it, and make sure that when those situations do come out in your life, because it will and it has, you'll be able to deal with it in a godly way. Number one reason many people fail and give into temptation is because their attitude. Your attitude towards unrighteousness and sin will cause you to give into temptation. If you're a type of person, you know, one thing about America, different from many other countries, is that it's very individualistic. You know, it's just you. It's me. I, mean, I don't care about other people. In some ways, it's good. In some ways, it's not. Maybe in Asian culture, it's not just about me. It's about everybody else in the family and every acquaintance. And when you start becoming selfish and only thinking about yourself and you don't care about everything that's going on around you, then you tend to fall into this temptation where your attitude towards unrighteousness and sin it becomes indifferent. Even though things around you is going down the toilet, even though your family, I'm talking about your family, your own mother, father, your brother and sister, you know, they're going down the toilet, you know, road to destruction, you just don't care. It's like, if I'm okay, I'm okay. I mean, that's like being a very, very selfish person. I mean, aren't you guys in that boat many times? Like, like, as long as I'm okay, I'm good. Right? I guess you only live for yourself. Right. You don't live for any other folks. If you are like that, and as a Bible believer, where we're, lo we're to love brothers and sisters in Christ, we're to love lost souls out there, you let that others just live out the window and then let them stay in trash can. Then what happens? When those temptations do come your way, there's no way you're going to resist those temptations. You're going to give into it. And once you give into it, what happens? <coughs> Excuse me. You go all the way. Once you start sinning, there's no way that any of you, including myself, stops like right in the middle. It's hard to do. I mean, very few, if not none, can actually just stop while they're doing it. Especially if it's their first few times. You just go with it. Maybe you have some experience and that you know that, okay, I'm doing the same thing again. I'm doing the same sin again, so I must stop. Then you might stop because you know the repercussion, you know the result, and you know the fruits that's going to bring. So your attitude towards unrighteousness and sin has to be same as what the Bible talks about, your attitude and your you know, heart should be towards unrighteousness and sin. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to look at some verses today. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. So if you don't want to give in to temptation, you have to check your attitude towards unrighteousness and sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. The Bible says, <clears throat> Rejoices. Not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. You know, when it comes to iniquity, 
What is your attitude? Do you rejoice? Even if your enemies, something bad does happen to them, do you start jumping and dancing? No. Whatever who happens to you and who has harmed you in any way, you live it in God's hand. Do you rejoice when you hear you know, bad music? Because some of you just cannot get out of bad music, especially if you've gotten saved later in your life. But that's not the true case nowadays. Everybody's full of bad music in their life. Yes. Does your body move when you hear bad music? Oh. Does your mind get better when you hear bad music? I mean, simple things like that. When you deal with worldly and wicked music, full of bad beats, what is your attitude? Do you enjoy it? You let your flesh enjoy it, or do you literally hate it? You have to ask true evil. You have to keep yourself away from it. You have to abhor it. Many times people tend to get into a situation where music is associated with certain things, right? right. Whether it's movies, TV shows, even, I guess, storybook, and there's music going around. Yes. People who truly have the attitude right attitude towards those things, will eschew it. What's eschew evil? You're going to run away from it, literally. You're going to abandon it. You're going to abstain from it. But are you the type of person, for example, what is really famous for New Year's events? Fireworks, right? A bunch of fireworks. Light shows everywhere. And then, a lot of times, those are associated with what? Bad music, right? Yes. Worldly music. Because, I, I mean, maybe there are some out there. I don't hear, like, you know, fireworks associated with, you know, Bach, right? Or Handel's Messiah, right? I wish, you know, some godly music. How great thou art. Do you, have you ever heard of a, or seen, you know, fireworks, how great thou art playing? Or amazing grace, or it is well with my soul. What a friend we have in Jesus. Hardly ever. Then you have a bunch of other stuff going on. Just to enjoy that fireworks, <clears throat> do you put yourself in a place where like, ah, you know, it's okay. It's just part of it. Compromise. And once you get into that situation, like our brother said, compromising is very easy to do. Then, <clears throat> why not go to a club, yeah. right? Same. If clubs showing passion of Christ, as many people think that's so godly, right? And I'm going to go witness to folks over there, you know? Along with that, they have a bunch of other musics, like Justin Bieber, you know, Britney Spears, right? Or even, I don't even know who's new nowadays, right? I'm like, okay, it's just the music. You know, I'm going to do some good things there. What do you think is going to happen to you? You think you're compromising word of God and your faith? God will bless that thing? No. You and I have to always remember this. When our attitude towards unrighteousness and sin starts compromising and starts, you know, debating with it, then you are going to commit that sin, give in to temptation no matter what. David should have been busy. Yes. He wasn't. That's why, you know, Bathsheba happened. That's why Uriah incident happened. When you are not busy, and when your attitude starts winding and becomes, you know, less offensive towards those unrighteousness and sin, then you are going to lose that battle. Right. As Christians, you and I, when it comes to unrighteousness and sin, we ha always have to be an offensive. 
Christians can't be a defensive Christian. You always have to attack against that sin. How are you going to attack against that sin? You always have to meditate on the Word of God. When, even before those situations come, you're going to recite the words of the God, I mean, Word of God. Amen. Abstain from all appearance of evil, like 1 Thessalonians 5.22. You always have to remind yourself, you have to meditate on it. And the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Amen. Then it's going to continue to play on your mind. It becomes part of your behavior. It, part, it becomes part of your life. Then you will understand, you know what? I know I'm a wicked human being. I could give in to temptation at any moment. So I have to make sure that I'm on the offensive side. So when you're playing basketball, where can you score? On the offensive side of the court or defensive side of the court? Offense, right? Yeah. I mean, if you always play defense, what's going to happen? Maybe you could play defense maybe, you know, 50%, 30%, based on the percentage. You're going to give up score here and there. Yes. But if you're always on the offensive side, I mean, there's no reason for you to give up a score. Because what you're trying to do is just, you know, make that basket. Yes. Many times, Christians fail because they're always on the defensive side. Maybe you could even block shots nine out of ten times. But that one time, if you give up that goal, that could ruin your life once and for all. I mean, one time you give up that goal and give up that basket, you could like, ruin all the things that you've ever done for the Lord. That testimony just goes away once and for all. There are many, many great men of God in the past just lost the whole testimony that they built for 30, 40, 50 years. Why? Because that one moment, because instead of playing offense, they started playing defense for many, many years against unrighteousness and sin and start compromising here and there, and they gave up that basket. Maybe about money, maybe about, you know, relationship problems, right? Any other sin, they just let that happen. And what happened? Think about testimonies like Billy Graham. Right. The man was used by God greatly, right. beginning of his ministry. Yeah. Hundreds, thousands of souls got saved through his ministry. But at the end, I mean, if you are a Bible believer, what happened? He left as a compromiser. Yes. I mean, that could be you or me. Just because we're sitting here doesn't guarantee anything. No, and especially if your attitude towards unrighteousness and sin is not in line with the Word of God. Yes. You, gotta be, you, you and I could do anything that all of our forefathers of faith have done and more. Yes. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Then today... You really have to think about your attitude towards unrighteousness and sin. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. You don't want to give in to temptation? <clears throat> Do this. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 11. <clears throat> the Bible says, Let him eschew evil. And do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Again, eschewing evil is to abstain from it, abandon it, stay away, clear from it. If you're, for example, say you're weak against smoking, and the route you go home has uh, 10 smoking shops. But there's another route where there's no smoking shops. What's the best thing to do if you know yourself the best? Yeah. Go away from it, Amen. right? Yes. Go, go somewhere else, even if you have to walk like one more minute or drive one more minute. Yes. Yeah. Another one, say you're a gambler. There's a casino everywhere in this role. And you're like, you know what? <laughs> 
Last five days, I was able to resist it. I'm, the, I'm still going to go. But you had such a bad day, right? You fought with your boss, co-workers, and you fought with your wife or husband. Life seems really hard today. And like, man, you know, just one round of table games and slot machines wouldn't hurt. You know, after I do it, I'll confess my sins to the Lord. I'll get right. Yeah, right. And then you go in there, you lose all your savings, you know. You know, you lose everything that you have. You come out and you become like the, you know, worst person in the world. And you start justifying things. But that would not have happened if you went the other way. Amen. I mean, have you heard of this many times? If you had gone the other way, right? Yes. For example, we do have apps like Google Maps or some other apps out there that shows you, you know, current, I guess, traffic conditions. Yes. You know, people say, what if you checked it, right? Many times, if you don't check it and that one time there was crazy accident there, and then sometimes you miss church, you come super late, and then people say, tells you, have you checked the traffic report, right? No, I just go in my way, you know. If Lord has given you some things to help out with your commute, I mean, just use it, yes. right? You know? That's why you, whatever you deal with unrighteousness, sin, your attitude should be, you know what? You know, I'm just going to keep myself out of it once and for all. If David didn't see Bathsheba, <clears throat> nothing would have happened. Right. Yeah. But he was there, right? And he's, he saw her and committed adultery, yeah. right? If, if you don't see it, that's the funny thing about us. If we don't see it, there's less temptation. Amen. Right. That's what you have to avoid, right. like TV. Yes. I mean, I know some folks don't have TV in this room and people are listening, but those of you who have TV, I mean, unless you're just watching godly stuff all the time, even on YouTube, right? Even if you see our channels, there are advertisements all yes. the time. I mean, what do you think that's going to do to you? Whatever the product it is, thousands and hundreds of products, it will tempt you to get it. That's the whole point. And many times you don't need it. Even, for example, cell phones, right? We live without cell phone a long time, and we live fine. Yeah. We have pagers, you know? Right. That worked out fine, yeah. you know? I could find a, what's a pay phone out there and call people. I wasn't late for anything, right? Actually, you're more diligent because you didn't want to miss, you know? Even before, without all these maps, you had Thomas map, right? You just find a place and go to places. Right. You don't have to rely on these things. But with all these things, you know, make some of the things more convenient, but make people like a, how should I say, very reliant dummies now. Amen. I mean, people are just relying on this technology. Yeah. You might, what happens to people when they lose their cell phone? Their life is over. Yeah. When they're crying, you know, many times and they're depressed for the whole day, right? But people lived without it before about 2000. Amen. You know, everybody had no phones, and they lived well. <clears throat> and people sin less because of that. Yes. How many times has that little gadget, right, gotten into trouble because of what's in it and where you, what you could access through it? I mean, honestly, high school kids under, they shouldn't have it. Yes. Because everywhere you go, these wicked images just pop up. Do you want a young man in elementary school, if you hate unrighteousness, sin as a parent, have access to that? If they need to go find like encyclopedia, you help them. You print it out for them. I mean, why would they need to go to multiple sites for it? Yeah. That kind of shows where your heart is as a parent or soon-to-be parent or as a future parent. What would you do in that situation? What is your attitude towards it? 
there's always a rotary phone nowadays. If you really need to contact them for many reasons, there's phones without internet connection. All you do is just talk on the phone. That's all they need, yeah. whether they like it or not. You know, that's all they need. I mean, if they're somewhere you know, with friends or whatnot, you definitely have to check your friends, you know, parents. If you are against unrighteousness and sin, you have to understand that your children are the best, how should I say, mm, invisible man. They will hide everything from you. That's why in many cases, we have horror stories among Christian parents where I never thought my child can do this. I never thought my child could do, you know, drugs. I never thought my kid would get pregnant. I never thought my kid would be addicted to gambling. You know, all these things. But it's happening in every Christian family throughout the United States and throughout the world. Why does that happen? Why do people just constantly give in to temptation over and over and over? Because of your attitude towards unrighteousness and sin. Because you're not strong against it. You're not offensive towards it. I mean, you just accept it. What, why does people always fall into temptation and commit sin? Because they accept it. And more than that, they themselves do it. Just ask yourself, do you do those sins? Do you do those unrighteousness? Do you commit yourself to be in those situations? You have to be honest when it comes to getting right with the Lord. Because if you do not have that kind of attitude, you never truly repent of your sins. The reason you're always in trouble is because you half-heartedly say sorry to God, and you go back to it over and over and over. If you are truly repented of certain sins that you've committed, you wouldn't do it. At least you wouldn't do it for at least, you know, a month at a time or even years. If you go back to it after a few weeks, that's not true repentance. But that's not even normal case. Normal case is you go back to it after like a few days. Even in hours. Can you believe it? You're like, Lord, I'm not going to do drugs. I hate it, Lord. It caused me grief in every way and sense possible. But you walk through this, you know, drugstore because it's legalized in this state now. Oh, Lord, why would you put me in that Why'd you put that store in that place? You know, you're causing me to sin. You go in there, buy some, you know, marijuana, and you do it, and you're like, ah, God, I'm not the only one. You are the cause of it, too. I mean, Lord gave you every other possible way to avoid that. You put yourself there. So you have to be honest. Why do I put myself in a situation where I can't commit sin. That's on you. Don't blame God for it, right? You put yourself in many of those situations. You're like, you know what? I do not want to drink. But man, my company always makes me go on a function to drink. Then pray to God to get a different job. Or talk to your boss and don't go. I <laughs> mean, they'll respect that, especially if it's done after hours, right? They might hate you, but hey, you're standing up for what's right, right? Of course, you have to be wise about it. But when you're standing up for what's right, and when you are against the unrighteousness and sin, you have to have some courage. I mean, you, you, you got to be bold about it yeah. when it comes to sin. Amen. You can't be like, you know, someone who shouts for your team to win. But when it comes to sin and unrighteousness, your voice is like tiny, tiny mouth over there. That's good, preacher. When someone's 
shouting obscenity against you, cussing against our Lord's name. Yeah. The whole, everybody's doing it, but you have opportunity to speak against it. I mean, you got to have some courage and boldness. Amen. In this country, we do have something called free speech. Yes. We have so many factions of people, they preach and shout their own agenda. But as a Bible-believing Christian, why are you guys so quiet, right? When you don't have courage and boldness, you cannot defeat temptation. You have to get out of your comfort zone, and you have to stand up for what's right. Amen. You want to ask true evil? You have to stand up for it. Yes. Amen. Why don't you drink? What if they ask you that question? You know, some kids will graduate from college and they go into workforce, right? And then people will be like, hey, happy hour. You hear it all the time. Happy hour, happy hour. You know, let's get to know each other. Let's, you know, rewind from, you know, this busy day at work. What are you going to do, right? Yeah, I'll just go with you, you know. You know, we'll just do it. Or you're going to be like, you know what? I'm sorry, I don't drink, you know, as a Christian, Amen. you know. Yeah. We could have a coffee time, coffee break. Yeah, but, you know, I'm not going to do that, right? Yes. <laughs> it, it shows what your stand is. You have to be bold and courageous about it. If God says, okay, even though you stand up for me, even though you're courageous and bold for the word of God, but, you know, I'm going to destroy you for it. That's not the God we believe in. Right. God will give you strength, and God will give you more boldness, Amen. and God will give you courage to stand up for the word of God. Amen. And as you do it more and more, yeah. then your attitude towards unrighteousness and sin will become stronger and stronger, and you'll be able to resist more temptation. That's why you have to understand that if Lord went through everything for me, I could go through for him even certain things, yes. maybe small things. And sometimes after you stand up for him, probably your knees buckling, right? You're, you know, shivering the whole time. Yeah. You're so scared. Oh, man, uh, Lord, I, I, I don't even know. But once you do it, you're going to have that satisfaction and peace Amen. that only Lord gives you Amen. because you stood up for him. Yes. Imagine if you were put in a situation where what you choose at that moment will determine your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ for the rest of your life. You could choose money or you could choose the Lord. That's what it's going to come down to many times. I mean, are you going to choose money? Are you guys having financial issues? And devil tempts you with all this, hey, you know, your family's been poor, but this is an opportunity. You know what? Your mommy and daddy's gone through tough times. This is an opportunity. Hey, your wife and husband's been bugging you about money all this time, but this is an opportunity, right? Your children deserve better, right? This is an opportunity. Or are you going to be bold and courageous about it and say no to those situations when you know it's going to compromise and when you know it's for unrighteousness and sin? Little money here, a lot of money here, you can't take it to heaven. Sure. You can't. No. Yeah. But the Lord said he'll provide your need. We always forget that. When do you compromise a lot when it comes to unrighteousness and sin? When you start wanting more than what you need, right. you have to check that at it too. Yes. Do I want more than what I need? Content. Right? I mean, I'm not a woman, so I'm, you know, I don't really have too much preference for purses or shoes or whatnot, right? If some, as a sister, right? If some, you see some sister have some purse, right? I need to have that. Are you that type of person? 
I need to have something better than that. Oh man, that's a nice shoe. I need to have that. I need to have better than that, right? If you're a guy, I don't know what guys are really into. What is it, like gadget? Or I don't even know. Cars? I need to have that. I need to. I mean, it's not what you need to, right? Yeah. It's what you want. Right. Always change what you're saying. Right? Stop saying, I need that, when you don't need it. Right. Do you really need, you know, $50,000 TV stereo system at your home to play your games, you know? I mean, do you really need $20,000 back, right? I mean... Well, sometimes I look at it this way. People can create a lot of fakes, right? I mean, how do I know yours is not fake either? I mean, the yeah. skills are so good now, right? Oh, yeah. right. Okay, you're, you're having a 20,000 back. Oh, this person is having 20,000 back. But one is fake, right? So, I mean, does that accomplish your desire to have the, you know, best bag or amongst all of your friends or your acquaintance or at work, it accomplishes nothing, right? That's why you have to think about it. According to the word of God, you got to hate evil, eschew evil, abstain from all appearance of evil. I mean, are you doing that in your life? Do you get excited when Worldly things gives you that excitement to your flesh. That's why I go back to what I discussed in the beginning. When it comes to music, it's probably one of the hardest things for a saved person to deal with and get rid of in their life once and for all. Especially if you've grown up with it. And especially, that's like part of your friend culture. You have to hate it. I mean, you have to. It's not like, you know, I just don't want to hear it. I just don't want to see it. You have to have attitude of hating those things. You have to hate evil. Amen. You have to hate sin. Yes. In order to hate sin, you have to make sure that your heart goes, you know what? If I hear it, man, you know, sin should grieve you, right? Yes. Because it grieves the Holy Ghost. I know my state, spiritual state, when I'm anywhere, you know, then there's worldly music playing. And, you know, it's part of life, right? But if I don't hate it, then I know that I've gotten weak in my faith. Amen. If I'm strong in the faith, I hear it, I probably cringe. I want to get myself out of there as soon as possible. Right. But for some, you, you're so backslidden, it doesn't matter to you. For some, you remember the lyrics and you start singing together in your mind. But some, you sing it out loud. And for some, you move with the beat, <laughs> literally. I, mean, I don't want to be standing next to you when some song that you remember playing, you start, you know, singing together, and then your body's moving. I'm like, wow, we're not really a good example, right? We're not a good testimony to others. That's why you have to understand that when looking at our forefathers of faith in the word of God, they failed, right? Because their attitude towards unrighteousness and sin started compromising because they weren't busy for the Lord and because they weren't abstaining from those situations. It's a simple solution for us. And it's a great lesson that we see from our forefathers of faith. We need to have Bible attitude to our own righteousness and sin. And we need to be busy for the Lord all the time. Do not create a situation where you have a lot of free time. You shouldn't. 
And a lot of free time is going to cause you to do a lot of wicked things, yes. especially when it comes to cell phone, right? He lets you do almost everything, right? Everything possible except going out there and, you know, committing it. You could see wicked stuff all the time. You know, you could chat with wicked people all the time, right? I mean, kids, if you feel lonely, go to the Bible, right? Amen. Don't go to some weirdo in the chat room who says, you know, I'm 15 when they're actually 40 year old, right? Yeah. Hiding behind the screen, you know, wicked. those wicked people out there. Yeah. And if after you hear this warning and you still do it, then it's on you. Amen. I mean, literally. Yeah. And then it's like, man, God has given you and I many warnings to avoid those situations. And as parents, you have responsibility to protect your children. As a parent, you have, to, you have responsibility to teach and instill in your children to have attitude against unrighteousness and sin. You know when people say, man, you got an attitude problem, right? You, know? you have an attitude problem. But if you have an attitude problem against unrighteousness and sin, that's great. Man, if you hear someone taking our Lord's in vain and your face suddenly, you know, turns into a most angry or disappointed person in a group of people inside a room, man, that shows something. It shows that, man, this person hates me talking his Lord's name in vain, right? But man, if you giggle and smile together, what does that show? Nothing. You're just part of them. And I never want to be part of the world. I, mean, I don't want any of these worldly things out there to tell me that, hey, you know, that person is part of us. I'm not. I never want to be even associated in that way. And you shouldn't either, right? Whether they approve or not, it doesn't matter. You have to have boldness and courage to stand for the word of God and Lord Jesus Christ, no matter what. There's going to be a time coming soon in your life where you'll be having the opportunity to stand up for the Lord or not. Because that test is given to every believer, young or old, in between. At that time, I know that if you ask true evil, you've been abstaining from all appearance of evil, and you've been against um, righteousness and sin, and you have the right attitude, it's going to come naturally for you. And you're going to trust the Lord to speak through you. Then you're going to have victory over sin, the temptations that's been hogging you for all these years, and you will truly repent of all the sins that's been bothering you. If I truly repent, that shows that I really hate that sin. I never want to do it again. But if you haven't truly repented and you go back to that sin over and over, that tells me, I mean, just human being me, I mean, Lord knows a lot better, that, hey, you don't really hate that sin. How can someone commit same sin over and over if they hate it? They do it because they love it, right? You're talking the talk, but you're not walking the walk. I hate that sin, brethren. I never want to do it again. I mean, maybe to your wife and husband. I hate it. I hate it. You know, I know how much pain and suffering it brings to me and us as a family. But you go out there and do it again. And if, it's, if I'm one of your family members, I'm looking at it like, no, you don't hate that. You do it because you love it. Don't get into that situation over and over in your life as a Christian. It's about time, right? Yes. You and I need to wake up and make sure that our attitude towards unrighteousness and sin is the attitude of hating them Amen. more than anything. Yes. And make sure that we're busy for the Lord. Yes. Make sure that we learn from our forefathers who have yes. failed who gave in. It's there for a reason, yeah. right? In the word of God. And with that, we can be good testimony to our children, our young people, old people, at work, anywhere we are at. Because 
at the end of the day? It's not you who's going to define who you are. It's going to be others who describes you. And their words will ultimately let others know who you really are. That's good. John Doe, man, hated him, but he stood for his Lord. I hated the fact that he never came to drink with us, but I respect that. Amen. Jane Doe, man, hated her for not, you know, gossiping, always, you know, telling the truth, standing for the word of God. Yes. Hated her, but respect that. We have to be that type of Christian, keeping that strong testimony, be courageous and bold for the Lord. Yes, sir. Then you and I will truly understand what not giving into temptation is, what giving into temptation is, and you and I will be at a place where, wow, I'm really close to the Lord. I'm really far from the Lord. Every sin signifies, it becomes so big that, you know what, I have to stay away from it, abstain from it, I have to eschew it, I have to hate it. It's almost like this, have you ever taken a shower but that dirt just doesn't go away. Yes. You play with marker, permanent marker. You try to wash it. It doesn't go away. Yeah. Right? In order for it to completely be washed clean once and for all and continuously, you have to give your all. Don't let any part of your life accept any unrighteousness and sin. Amen. You have to abhor it, hate it, for all parts of your life. Then you and I actually have a chance. Chance, I'm not saying we'll do it, we actually give us opportunity yes. to show to the Lord and the world that you know what? We do stand up for the word of God. Not by words only, Action. but by actions. Amen. And it comes from the heart. Let's pray.